You're watching The Real Fishing Show with Bob Azumi. When you think of hot oil, what do you think of? A nice sensual massage? Well, in the case of today's guest, who's fishing with my brother Wayne, when you think of hot oil, you think of grease popping in a fry pan over an open fire full of fillet. This guy eats everything he catches. It's Daryl Cronzy from Going Fishing, and he's fishing with my brother Wayne. Once you see this piece of work, you'll never forget it. Glad you could join us. Coming up... Lake St. Clair is known as a fish factory for musky, walleye, perch, and smallmouth. On today's show, Bob shows us how scaling down your tackle can help you catch pressured fish. Lucky there. All right. And then it's off to Guardian Eagle Resort in northwestern Ontario. Bob takes the director's seat as his brother Wayne fishes with the host of Going Fishing, Daryl Cronzi. These two spend more time cracking jokes than catching fish, and Bob's ego takes a beating. Stick with us because this is, for the first time, real fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes. Can you oh. see the size of Could that? be a world record. <laughs> You've got to love it. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. man. Wait a second. That one. Oh, there you got him. Yeah. That is so cool. Oh, yeah. That is a monster. The Real Fishing Show with Bob Azumi. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool. Oh, oh, oh. oh I got one! A Slavosaurus! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. Man, that's a good fit. Oh, yeah, a good one. Whoa! Here he comes! Yeah! yeah. Wow, <laughs> look at that! This is what? Don't be pissed. This is all about right there. 16 pounds. Now look at there. Real Fishing is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, Ontario, more to discover, and Tim Hortons. Hey folks, that's what I call real fishing. Ah, I got a little hitchhiker here. A mayfly. All right. See you later, guy. Hey, you know when it comes to seasonal patterns, well, I'm down here in Windsor, Ontario, on Lake St. Clair, and uh, there's been a mayfly hatch. It's been happening, uh, oh, the last few weeks, and the smallmouth bass fishing has been excellent. When you get a mayfly hatch, you'll get walleye, smallmouth, and all kinds of fish feeding on them, and there's no question that Lake St. Clair is a fish factor. I'm talking about musky fish and walleye fish and bass fishing. It's incredible. And it's a big bowl shaped lake. And what I'm doing today is I'm just practicing for the Canadian Open Bass Tournament, but I want to show you a little technique for pressured fish. Now, I'm going to fish areas that really got hit hard this weekend by a number of tournaments, both out of the US and Canada. And uh, even though a lot of these fish have been caught and released in this area I'm going to, I'm going to show you a little technique on finesse fishing them, especially since they've been so active during this Mayfly hatch. Let's get out there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. little small oh, <laughs> little jumper you know one of the things about matching your tackle to the fish is a lot of people get carried away with heavier line for bass fishing and uh what i like to oh he came off what i like to do is is every now and then just lighten up and as i said this area here got pummeled opening weekend of bass i mean there were so many bass boats and pleasure boats through here bass fishing that I figure these fish had been fished for pretty hard. So that's why I've lightened up and I've got four pound silver thread on here on a little 750 size reel with a light action rod that I designed for Shimano. And with this small little track down Rebel Minnow, it's perfect. It's a good balanced combo where I can make fairly long casts with it, get the bait out in this crystal clear water and then just jerk that small bait along and this is what I'd call finesse jerk baiting. Stay tuned for more Lake St. Clair track down smallmouth. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a fish. 
Closed captioning is brought to you by FNCC and VoterExam.com. Chevrolet. When you're the number one selling brand in Canada, you rock the nation. With more power, more fuel efficiency, more dependability, and more utility. Plus, get the Silverado Special Edition Crew. Now with $1,000 worth of extras on us. The Rock the Nation event is back and rocking. Coleman promised. Coleman promised to light my way. Coleman has been making reliable lanterns for over 100 years. Coleman promised me shelter from the storm. Only Coleman makes tents with a weather tech system to keep you dry, guaranteed. Coleman promised to get me through the night. The double lock valve guarantees our beds won't leak. Coleman promised to keep things cool. The extreme cooler that keeps ice for five days in temperatures up to 32 degrees Celsius. That's cool. Coleman promise. At Coleman, we keep our promises for the past 100 years and the next. Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View. Sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. It's one of the oldest theories in angling. You need big baits to catch big fish, and the small fish will leave you alone. Sounds logical, and in some cases, we know it's true. Over the years, we conducted a thorough study on this claim. First, we headed to Knee Lake, a place infested with pike and walleye. To avoid tiny hammer handles, we armed ourselves with giant chunks of plastic. Still, we caught plenty of small fish, along with enough big boys to keep us happy. Back home, we played around with a big smallmouth. Heads and tails the largest bass in a local lake. He easily inhaled an 8-inch wad of rubber. Next day, would he be interested in a tiny 1-inch crappy jig? In some locations, fish are opportunistic feeders. When you toss a big bait, you'll still interest anything out there with big ideas. Checking the books, the largest specimens often fell to standard, even small lures. Witness the world record muskie, a 65-pounder by Ken O'Brien, compared to the 3.5-inch plug that captured the fish. The 34-pound Canadian record brown, this one-inch lure. The reason for this is size of available forage. Fish key in on the most abundant food source and feed selectively, even exclusively on these. It's far more productive to cover lots of proven big fish water, but if it gives you confidence, by all means, wear out your arm casting old King Kong. Fishing in areas that receive a lot of fishing pressure can be tough. That's when you have to try something a little different in order to coax a fish into biting. Using smaller size baits can really pay off. Chances are that the fish haven't had as many small lures thrown at them, and they're more willing to bite. The new Trackdown Minnow is a great option because of its size and realistic finish. It sinks at a rate of one foot per second, allowing you to precisely control the depth of the retrieve. It's just over two inches long, which makes it the perfect size for fishing for pressured fish. So be sure to keep some of these in your tackle box next time you're out on the water. Even pressured fish can't resist them. I'm going to go real shallow. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, come on, you gonna do any tail dancing? Come on, baby. This is a good fish right here. <laughs> For a light outfit, this is a nice small mouth. Or is it a large mouth? Let's see. I don't know, it might be a large mouth, I'm not sure. Staying down. There's a big boulder in the water that I cast it to. Come on, baby. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a fish. This is a big old battle scarred fish here, I'll tell you. Look at this. He's got a slice from a muskie out of him, too. 
Looks like a muskie has taken a slice out of him. Oh, wow. Looky there. All right. <laughs> Where the flyer's at? Well, it's a hog, but look at him. He's a battle scared old brute. Just a battle scared. I changed up. I put the rainbow trout color. This comes in four patterns, this lure. Rainbow trout, cutthroat, brown trout, and brook trout. This is the uh, the little rainbow trout color right here of the track down. <laughs> now, look at this. Look at that back. A muskie's taking a swat out of him. Then he's just a big old battle scarred fish. Whoa, that's a good fish. That's what I'm talking about right there. Catching recycled fish. In fact, this fish here has been beat up and raked by a muskie. Even by its tail, you can see how its tail's done in there too. But it's a survivor, and for a survivor, you deserve to go back. <laughs> All right, see you later. Hey, next time you're fishing in an area that's got a lot of pressure, it doesn't hurt to lighten up and go with lighter line and smaller bait. And I'll tell you, the dividends can pay very well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman. Should you use your motor in forward or reverse? Well, in today's tip, I want to talk about using it in reverse back trolling. I've got a four-stroke killer here, and the whole idea is to hold it in this slight breeze and to hold over structure. Now, what I'm doing is I'm marking walleyes in deep water here, anywhere from 25 to 30 plus feet of water, using a jig of minnow, fuzzy grub, just tip with a minnow, and keeping it as vertical as I can and holding or hovering over the structure. And how I'm working some of the contours around here of this bit of a hump off this island is I'm just using the boat slowly in reverse, every now and then kicking it into neutral and working it ever so slowly with that jig and minnow. So the whole idea of back trolling is boat positioning and holding yourself right over the fish. Up next, Wayne Azumi and Daryl Cronzi show us why they're such good fishing partners. <laughs> There's something new at the top of the food chain. The world's first supercharged four-stroke upboard and the only power system of its kind anywhere. The revolutionary Mercury Verado. From whole shot to top end, it delivers unmatched power and acceleration, all in the quietest outboard ever built. See why all other outboards are history. Mercury Verado, take charge. Bomber. You know, as long as I've been in the business now, this is probably one of the most unusual fishing trips I've ever done. I want a fly-in fishing trip up here about a half hour flight out of Sioux Lucka. We actually flew about an hour flight from Thunder Bay, Ontario, north into Guardian Eagle Fly-in Fishing Lodge. And uh, what's unique about it is there's some prize winners here from Chicago, four gentlemen who are great guys who won the trip through Ontario Tourism to come up here fishing on a four day trip. But what is really weird is, I have three of my competitors up here. Three other fishing shows from Canada are here with me. We're up here as a consortium, all together to host these prize winners for their four day fishing trip. And it's been a pretty weird week. In fact, my brother Wayne is up here and he's fishing with Daryl Cronzy from Going Fishing and it's quite a pair. Let me just crack this walleye up here and uh, let's go over to their boat and see what they're talking about. On the real fishing show, we've got a real treat. Well, I wouldn't say a real treat, but an unusual treat. I've got Daryl Cronzy here. We're up on this contest and I'm with all our pals and buddies. The consortium, Daryl. Consortium is right. Well, sort of like the United Nations, different, yeah. different nationalities, you know. 
and uh, we got the executive producer sitting in the front there just laughing his chops <laughs> off. But we're going to do something very unusual. We're going to go out, catch a few fish, and talk about the state of the union. State of the industry. That's it. Let's go. State of the fishery. Let's go for it, buddy. All right. Stick with us because this is, the, for the first time, real fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Won't those Japanese motors going forward? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're used to gray, not the good black, right? <laughs> when you grow up, too, you'll be able to get a nice black one, okay? <laughs> Is it strange to be fishing with an intelligence for a change? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Actually, if you turn sideways, you got about the same profile as my brother, so maybe I won't know the difference as long as they keep quiet. Problem with both of you, you, don't, you never keep quiet. Both of you. Wayne, what was it like growing up with Bob? <laughs> I don't know. I was always making money. Was he well, so, so, he, so he could eat. <laughs> he must have made a lot of money. <laughs> oh, look at that smile on his face. Look, look, look at that smile on his face. You think he's got something there? Yeah, he's got something there. <laughs> you know, only if Wayne and Daryl could catch fish like that. Oh, look at him. <laughs> well, they'd probably have a few more viewers, you know. <laughs> you ever allowed him to direct? <laughs> no. He whines. <laughs> he whines and whines and whines. <laughs> well, Bobby was number two after Red, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right? right. Yeah, that's right. He was. And then a bunch of them jumped on the bandwagon after you guys got it going. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Then I kind of snuck in. Including yourself. You know, yeah, I, I, I yeah. snuck in. You snuck in. Yeah. But, but now it seems, honestly, and let's be honest, anybody whose girlfriend or wife buys them a camera, <laughs> it seems to have a TV show. Yeah, right? that's true, yeah. And I'm going to ask you one thing while we're fishing today. Don't call me buddy. <laughs> Can I be excused for a minute while I catch a fish? <laughs> <No. here>? <laughs> <laughs> now get a close-up of that. Yeah? Now that you're giving a tonsillectomy. <laughs> nice looking fish. <laughs> that is a good looking fish. <laughs> there we go. There are a lot of fish in this lake, though. Well, you know, it's a fish factory. If you want to, you know, want to teach someone how to catch walleyes, this is the place to come. You know, and we know the big ones are there, the pet ones, anyway. Well, you throw that ones under the dock. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Need some fish? We thought things were a little slow for you, can we? Help you? Oh, look at that! Bronzy actually threw a fish back. I thought they all went into the lard. You never thought of a partner? No, no, I know. I mean, since we started this thing. A good partner? Well, a hockey player, or next hockey player. <laughs> Bringing somebody in. That's how bad the caster they are. They just cast in my boat. <laughs> That's Cronzy's lure, too. It's no good. I'd bite the line, but he's using anchor rope. <laughs> how do you... Let me see. Is that how you do it? <laughs> I've only seen that on one other fishing show. No kidding. <laughs> You're picking up bad habits, let me tell you. <laughs> let me try that again. You know, that's really hard. I saw that. I, I thought it was a dysfunctional thing, but oh. you want to hold my rod, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> There's more laughs with Wayne and Daryl coming up. I figure the more bass I eat, that's where I put him out of business. <laughs> there is a place where people still care about real quality and innovation. Where ideas aren't limited to an eight-hour clock. Performance is measured by your total satisfaction, and attention to detail is a celebrated way of life. Welcome to the Ranger family. Real people, real commitments, and boats that are literally legendary. Zoomy. After a day fishing, there's nothing like spending time enjoying a beautiful summer evening with my family and friends. And I won't let mosquitoes stop us from enjoying the fun. That's why I trust New Off Mosquito Lamp. The Off Mosquito Lamp uses a unique heat-activated pad that kills mosquitoes on an average-sized patio. I've always trusted Off to protect me when I'm fishing. Now Off gives me the protection I need for outdoor entertaining, too. 
Office of Festive Protection you can trust. You're watching The Real Fishing Show with Bob Azumi. Guardian Eagle Resort is located in northwestern Ontario in picturesque Sunset Country. This premier fly-in fishing lodge offers direct flights from Chicago and Minneapolis. The resort offers beautiful handcrafted cabins and exquisite meals in the main lodge. They provide you with a 16-foot lund, a guide, and all the bait and tackle that you need. And the fishing is unbelievable. Catching over 100 walleye a day is no exaggeration. And the guides can cook some up for you during shore lunch. So come on up to Ontario Sunset Country and give Guardian Eagle Resort a try. You'll be glad you did. I'll tell you one thing about those boats. They've got strong seats. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one is pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you had to see them at shore lunch, so true or false, right? Did you have to see them at shore lunch? Well, I couldn't. There was such a flurry at the table with the two of you getting in there. I couldn't see anything. I got my jacket off. I got my suspenders on. I'm sitting there with my hands in my suspenders like this, and he's behind me going. <laughs> I don't think in 30 years I've ever taken a poke at Bob. You ever taken a shot? No, because if I ever give him one poke in that stomach, I'd lose my hand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had the wife up to Barry the other day. Yeah. We went, I forget what we were at, Molson's Park, right? Yes. Doing a, a little appearance here. And I couldn't believe this. There was an Azumi sushi house. True or false? Oh, yeah, that's true. You yeah, know, it is. True, I yeah. think there's a couple stores here. And I guess you people have asked you, if, you know, do you guys get your finger in that? You got it in everything else. But <laughs> you got your finger in the sushi house? Hey, I got one too. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, but if, you know, if you got your finger in the sushi no, business. No, we don't have our finger you in said, it. You said no. Know? Well, I've, you know, it's a hell of a lot better than you. I've never heard of a Karanzi restaurant. I just told everybody you're not in sushi. Bob's the front man for the Mandarin. <laughs> Wait a minute. The front man for the Mandarin is that little sewn Buddha they got up front. <laughs> Does he have anything nice to say about anything or anybody? Now, let me ask you something. Yeah. You're on the Bass Tour. Bob's on the Bass Tour. He's on the Bass Tour in Canada and in the United States, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Spending a lot of your money? That's true, yeah. <laughs> You know, we could do a lot more shows if he was around. Do you like eating bass? <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. I've seen you boil them up. I figure the more bass I eat, that's where I put him out of business. <laughs> I want you to know something. Now, listen, if you're, if you're a, not just a big shot, but if you're somebody in Ontario or even in the United States, right, and you get these bass guys pull up to your docks, don't let them steal the fish from under your docks. Run out there, stamp on the docks, and throw rocks at these Guys like Azumi that are trying to steal your pets from under your docks. You know, he hasn't shaved since he's been up here. He's been up here for like four days. He is looking so scruffy right now that I didn't know if it was the real Dale Crimes or somebody that just fell out of the ditch. Now here, do you want my rod? Yeah. <laughs> like, let's be honest. When you're going to come north, though, and, and all kidding aside, if you can come in here and catch 50, 60 fish like this in a couple hours. Yeah, right? yeah. What more do you want, that, Mike? That right? yeah. nice. you know, you know, we have a tendency to get sort of jaded and we're catching so many fish, you're saying, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I, That's typical northern Ontario. You know, you're going to get your three, you're going to get your fours, you're going to get your fives. You watch some of these other shows and they'll ice pack a bunch of tens. But, <laughs> but the live fish, they're like this. <laughs> Does anybody out there know a good lawyer? Oh, look it, oh, Bobby's got a fish. Can you believe that? Yeah. And nobody put it on his hook. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's turn the camera around and get on the real men in this show. I, like, I've got my lake and you've seen the fish in it, right? You know why You know why the fish are in it? Why? I've got a no-fly cormorant zone. You know? Really? Six o'clock in the morning, out in my underwear with a shotgun, just to make sure that the cormorants leave the fish alone. No. Well, well, actually, if you're out there in your underwear, you don't have to fire have out to the shotgun. You scare them away. away. <laughs> Flash them once, and they're gone to the other end of Georgia Bay. But, but no, no, we do have a problem with cormorants. We've got a problem with the zebra mussel right now. We've got a problem with the gobies. And again, we got a problem with some biologists. <laughs> But, but our fishery is pretty good. If you look oh, at it, it oh, is look good. at this. This yeah. is spectacular what we're doing here. Middle of the afternoon, you know, late summer, pulling fish up after fish out of here. It's it is paradise. I use that word a lot, but it is paradise. Yeah, so we do have some good management and great resources. You know, Bob's on a roll over there. I just wish he'd get off the side of his body and stand up. <laughs> they keep referring to my belly. Well, I'll tell you one thing. 
earlier today when Daryl was wearing his bib uh, rain suit bottoms, I thought he had something under it. I thought he was carrying spare tackle, maybe some rods and reels and spare clothes under there. I'm not even sure what he had there. And then I looked over and Wayne, he, he looks like he's underprivileged. I don't know, between the two of us, like Abbott and Costello. Now you're going, you're, I guess you're going to go to Lawrence. You're going to try and get Lawrence, right? Well, I'm sure we will, yeah. You know what's sure. really nice? <laughs> what's that? You won't be playing with that's just Etch-a-Sketch anymore. I used to say you drop those other fish finders and all the ink falls to the bottom. You just shake them right back up and get them working again. I hear Bob saying, gee, look at the fish on that fish finder. He's never seen reality fish finders before. <laughs> Wayne, this has been fun, though. I mean, honestly, this has probably been the fastest show in TV history. Yeah, but well, you've got somebody to help you catch fish. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it has been fun. It's been a good week. Oh, it's right? been a great week. Up here at Garden, Garden Eagle Resort. You know, yeah. there's been a little bit of pouting amongst the four of us. Right? Well, not me and you. No, right? hey, that's right. There's a lot of pouting in front of the boat over there. Yeah. Yeah. But, but we've had a lot of fun. Oh, great fun. You know, lots of fish. Lots of but fish. But just don't call me buddy. <laughs> You got another one there? Yeah, that's right. You yeah. are learning. You know, we got to close this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I've been told I'm in terrible closure. I cannot close show? a show or anything. So, you know, I, you've got a lot of experience in closing. But you want to know something? What's that? First off, you're learning how to catch fish to close them, right? <laughs> yeah. And I catch you bigger ones. You got a nice fish. You got a nice fish. Nice fish. Yeah. And I'm going to close the show off. Can okay, I close yeah, this yeah, thing off? You, you close the thing off. <laughs> Hi, I'm Daryl Cronzi. I want you to know I'm fishing with my good buddy Wayne Azumi, and we are fishing, real fishing, right? This is real fishing. You know, it's nice for a change. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Put them back or eat them, one oh. or the other. <laughs> wow, you're the expert on the eating. <laughs> Let's go. Here he goes. The end of the show. That's a closer. <laughs> All right. Hey, we had a great time up at Guardian Eagle Resort, but I will say these two are a little too close for comfort. We'll see you next week right here for some more real fishing. All right. See you later. Oh, wow. I'm full of I'm That is a fish of a lifetime. Whoa. <laughs> well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Wow. That was too cool. Oh, ho, ho, ho.